Right then. Uh, hi, Charlotte. Thank you very much for taking the time to meet with me today to talk about our Careers Club um, initiative. Um, I just wondered if you, you would mind um, kicking us off by telling us a little bit about yourself, if that's all right. Yeah, I will do. My name's Charlotte. I am the HR advisor and team lead at Ritual. I've been here for just coming up to four years now. Um, and then before that, I was a HR assistant at Staffordshire Police. And then before that, I did a psychology degree down um, near London. So that's kind of kind of my background on how I got here. Gosh, I can't believe it's four years since you joined. Uh, no. <laughs> Um, so um, you know, this is it. We're creating a series of um, uh, of these episodes um, to hopefully, you know, give people confidence that you know there are options out there for them. Whether it's uh, for people looking for a completely new start in their career, or if it's uh, the beginning of their career, um, I just wondered if you could perhaps tell me a little bit how you've um, approached applying for jobs um, when you've previously been looking for work. Yeah, I think. The main thing that stood out to me really was thinking back to when I was at uni and I was trying to find not necessarily paid work, but kind of work experience for over the summer. So when I was going home, I just wanted something to do over the summer and to kind of get some skills and some experience under my belt. I was emailing all kinds of companies. So what I did was I did loads and loads of research, compiled a massive list of companies that I would be willing to work for, well, um, you know, volunteer for really as part of my work experience placement, created a, a ginormous spreadsheet with all of those on, found the contact details, emailed them all, um, and then kind of waited to see if anybody would get back to me. And I was really lucky that two companies did. So I had um, kind of a full summer of working with two different companies, which I was really really lucky to be able to do that but the main thing I did that I think was really beneficial there was staying organized and keeping on top of it so I kind of left no stone unturned and got in touch with anybody and everybody in the area really but then also tracked it on my spreadsheet so when I contacted them whether I'd had a response whether that response was successful or not successful whether to follow up with them all that kind of stuff and really I think that's why I was successful in the end just because I was just quite tenacious and, and made sure that I was staying organised and staying on top of it. Then after when I wasn't at uni and I was kind of getting into the real world of work, I used a, a mixture of methods, really. Uh, I had some good success from agencies, recruitment agencies. Both of my roles, actually, that I've, that I've had have been through agency, which is really interesting. Um, so I, I kind of wouldn't underestimate their value, for, especially for a for a job seeker, and especially if you can find an agency that really fits in with your values and, and they understand you as a person. Yeah, I think uh, recruitment agencies are, are worth their weight in gold, actually, when you find a good one, because um, mm. it's an extra pair of hands and eyes. Um, also, you know, fighting your corner and helping you out because it can feel like quite a lonely experience. Um, yeah. I also quite liked your little uh, tenacious story there about being organised because I remember when I was applying for an internship when I was at university um, I did similar and I literally got a list of about 650 contacts. I emailed every one of them. I got next to no responses but mm. um, the one who did respond where I did do an internship with um, they took pity on me because they too <laughs> had a, had a um, child at a similar age who was uh, 19 and uh, I was just like I landed lucky really but it only takes that one person to take a chance on you and then you're away. Definitely, yeah, cool. definitely. Uh, and then uh, so you, you, you now find yourself as our head of uh, HR um, so uh, you obviously are an integral part to us as a business in terms of um, you know helping us um, helping support uh, line managers who um, are recruiting people um, you know, what do you look out for in candidates when you're sorting through, you know, lots and lots of applications? That's a good question. The uh, the absolute gold star of a candidate in my eyes is the person who's just made the effort in their application. And that comes across <clears throat> and that comes across in their application really, really quickly and really easily. You can spot it from a mile away. So they've tailored their CV, they've gone in, they've made sure that they're evidencing the essential criteria for the role and they've done you know, a cover letter or just something else that shows that they're actually interested. And I think that's really important in the current job market. You need to find the ways of setting yourself apart from everybody else as quickly as possible. B 
because if you're using a job board for example then I can put out a job and receive hundreds sometimes of applications and you have to find a way of getting through those really quickly so the easiest way for me is just to look at the people who've made the effort who's put a covering letter you're you know you're going to top my list I'll look through you first who's actually answered all the questions that we're asking you know some people just wouldn't bother but those things are really really important to put the effort in and if especially if it's a job that really really interests you and you really want it then you know let that shine through in your application yeah the other thing that I, I'm a bit of a stickler for grammar as well and that's the <laughs> other thing that I uh, I always pick up on as well so I know I remember we... when we were recruiting yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah watch your grammar um so then uh, that, that's great so um at Rizal here we we pride ourselves on recruiting um people of all ages and um you know backgrounds um we have a strong focus uh, on um, apprentices and graduates historically yeah. um Typically, graduates and apprentices don't tend to have that much in in their CVs. Um, what would you recommend to those candidates who've got perhaps limited experience on their CV um, to to not just plump it up, but also make it you know really stand out? Yeah, I think that I think you're right. That can be really tricky. I think my main piece of advice would be is to believe believe in yourself and believe that you always do have some relevant experience or some relevant skills you just need to find them and make them as obvious as possible so I guess I would say I, I would recommend that you spend some time sit down and really work out what your skills are you know what what do you believe in what's really important to you what are you good at those are really kind of simple questions that you can sit down and ask yourself and then make sure they shine through in your application. So some things that I would look for if it's somebody who doesn't necessarily have any work experience. What have you done outside of school or college or university? Have you done any volunteering? Were you a captain of a team? You know, have you been in a, a society of some description? Have you mentored other people? All that kind of stuff that all shows really great employability skills. You just need to make sure that they are coming through in the right way and that you're working them in the right way and you're linking it to the role wherever you can. So make sure the hiring team sees all of that and make sure it's obvious because sometimes, you know, you can picture a standard CV and you've got a bit of work experience, a bit of education, and then right down at the bottom it'll say like hobbies and interests and it might say, oh yeah, I was, I was head boy of my school. Well, okay, great. But bump that up if you haven't got much else to talk about tell me why that's relevant tell me why that's making you apply for this job and why you think that gives you the skills to apply for this job so I think that's that's the key thing really believe that you do have the skills because you do because everybody does really they will, they will be there and put the time in to find them and then make them obvious to the hiring team yeah no I think that's a that's good advice it's a bit of an old school technique, but um, a lady who um, used to I used to um, volunteer with, she once told me that her little um, tip was uh, she used to print a cover and letter and CV off in their col on coloured paper, mm. uh, just as a way of um, standing out from all of the uh, the white CVs and covering letters. Yeah. Uh, but uh, okay, and then um, so that was good. And then in terms of um, prepping for interviews then um you know everyone's got their own ways and means in terms of how they prep you obviously sound like you, you've been quite tenacious in hunting down opportunities once you've got that golden opportunity to have an interview how have you been prepped and um, got yourself organized for that yeah i think it sounds like a cliche but it's really important to make sure you've done your research so make sure you know what you're walking into you know exactly what the role is <clears throat> You know what the role is you have researched the role you've researched the company you know a little bit about it all of that stuff is actually really really important and because more often than not probably 99% of that time you know the first question is oh what you know what do you know about us why are you here basically why us and it's really important for you to have really put some thought into that and understand what it is um, that's made you apply for that job and why you're interested and then kind of linked to that is don't be scared as well if you want to take some notes in with you I personally as a as a, as a hiring manager or as an, an interviewer wouldn't mind at all if somebody said oh can I just grab my notes out of my bag please because um well first of all it gives you an opportunity to write things down throughout the interview so if you think of a question you really want to ask at the end but you don't want to interrupt you can just jot that down 
I, I would, would never see that as a bad thing. I think it just shows that you, you're really taking an interest. I think another thing that I've seen from, from my perspective in kind of the HR world is that we, I don't think anyone would disagree with me when I say we ask quite a lot of our candidates and that can sometimes include psychometric testing, um, preparing presentations or anything like that and making sure that you are thoroughly prepared and you've thoroughly read everything that's been sent through by the, the recruitment team of the organisation you're going through the interview for is vital because it's really easy just to miss something but as soon as you're the person that's missed it you're not going to be top of that list anymore so make sure that you've absolutely done everything that's being asked of you is really really important and then finally from me I would say if it's a face-to-face -face interview make sure you practice your journey because there is absolutely nothing worse than being late because the organisation aren't going to be very happy even if it's something that you know it, it's completely unavoidable there's nothing you can do you're still disrupting people's days which is tricky also you're going to be in a right flap and a bit of a fluster so I would always make sure that I've you know driven there once before if it's public transport mapped all of that out and make sure I know exactly how long it would take me yeah no I think that's fair uh, that's uh, that's a good shout I heard in our previous in my previous um, um, video um, session with, when we were discussing his career um, yes. he'd said that uh, he once went to the completely wrong um, office. Um, oh. So, um, you know, it's best to um, be prepared and avoid those um, situations. Yeah. I think uh, one thing that I, um, I, I've i always liked from candidates, both um, when I've been interviewing people and hiring, but also myself when I've been applying for jobs is, um, is actually um, post that interview, um, always emailing, uh, you know, um, and dropping them a, a thank you. Um, I think that's just a nice touch and um, you know it because uh, it is time taken out of people's busy diaries and um, you know I think it shows that you're genuinely quite compassionate um, which a lot of people tend to like um, and yeah. that's my personal um, preference anyway. Yeah that, I think that's a good idea. Um, and then uh, last but not least then obviously you know it's stressful looking for jobs um, it can be a real nightmare and a real challenge you know in terms of them um, remaining motivated then how how do you go about um, maintaining uh, your motivation levels not just necessarily when you're applying for jobs but also in work as well you know especially in these um, these times it's uh, quite a challenge to, to stay motivated. Mm, yeah it, it definitely is and I can see I can see a lot of people in the job market right now who will be feeling exactly that, that it just feels like a sort of never ending, uh, never ending struggle. And I think the pressure just just continues to mount, doesn't it? The main thing that I do and I would always recommend anyone to do if they're really struggling with motivation is to really define what your end goal is. So what is it that you're trying to achieve and, and take a lot of time to really define that and understand exactly what that is. And then work out how you're going to get there. So what are the steps you need to do to help yourself get to that goal? What are you going to actually do about it? What are the steps you need to take? Make sure they're all documented. Make sure you've got times against them. You've got some really specific tasks to complete in, in order to achieve that end goal. And I think not only does that help you and focus your thinking, if you're really invested in something and you're willing to put the time in to make sure that it is well thought through, um, and, and you've got everything lined up, lined up and you know exactly what it is that you're trying to achieve, you're just so much more likely to make it happen. And also, you know, people talk about manifestations, all that kind of stuff. If you think about something enough and you write it down enough and you have it written on your fridge, whatever it is, you know, it's more than it's more likely to happen. You know, it's got to be at the forefront of your mind all the time and every single thing that you're doing stop and think right does this support my end goal is this actually helping me get where i want to get if it's not don't do it you have to make sure that you're staying on track very good yeah good advice <laughs> um so that's it uh, from me charlotte no, no questions from you you no no i think that's it that's actually a really good point that you that's actually just uh, led me to raise is that Job interviews and recruitment processes in general are two way streets or, or the good ones are. And it's really important that not only are you selling yourself, but that you've given the organisation the chance to sell themselves to you. And it's really important that it's a fit both ways. So, you know, when it comes to questions and things like that, making sure that you you do you've compiled your views on the organisation, what you like about it, what you're maybe not sure about and make sure that you, you get the opportunity to ask those questions because 
it really is a, 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 a case of making sure that it's you're compatible with each other not just that they like you yeah great well um thank you very much for taking the time this evening charlotte it's much appreciated um, no as always above and beyond and um, <laughs> thank you for um, being a willing volunteer for the uh, the career school no problem at all thank you